Blink twice if I'm in danger. Well, maybe not. Yeah, let's <laughs> not answer that one, right? Welcome to the film cast's review of Blink Twice. I'm going to read the plot summary for this movie from the internet. When tech billionaire Slater King meets cocktail waitress Frida at his fundraising gala, he invites her to join him and his friends for a dream vacation on his private island. Wild nights soon blend into sun-soaked days, but when strange things start to happen, Frida must uncover the truth if she hopes to make it out alive, end quote. Joining us for our review of this movie, she is the co-host of This Ends at Prom, a podcast series analyzing the staying power of womanhood featured in coming-of-age and teen girl movies. She's also the lead evening news editor at SlashFilm.com. BJ Colangelo, welcome back to the podcast. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me back. So great to have you back. Also, people can read BJ's review of Blink Twice yes. over at SlashFilm.com. Definitely worth checking out. And several so, follow-up pieces to you, so thank you for diving into it, BJ. Oh, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah. It would not be me coming to the film cast if it wasn't for a movie that was built in a lab to appeal to me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, We aim to please. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into it. Of course, this is the directorial debut of Zoe Kravitz. Uh, and I was... Really interesting. You know, it's it's always fascinating when somebody who you know primarily as an actor becomes a director, and you get to see uh, how what what of their skills and what of their experience they apply to this task. Uh, but yeah, I, I had almost no expectations going into this. I'm curious, BJ, what were your expectations going in, and what did you think of the movie Blink Twice? So, admittedly, I didn't fully know anything about it because I remember it originally being titled Pussy Island. Yes, yeah. and much more memorable so, title. Yeah. Right, like <laughs> that's a title that sticks in my head. So I was not fully following that the title had changed. So I kept seeing, you know, a trailer for like Blink Twice. I'm like, I don't know what this is. I'm not paying attention. I'm, I've had my fill on rich people are assholes movies. Like mm -hmm, I think, mm -hmm. I think we're good here. And then I went and saw it in an advanced screening. And for about the first third of this movie, I was like, all right, what are we doing here? And then it went where it needed to go. And I was like, <laughs> I, I want everyone to write Zoe Kravitz a blank check. I want her to make a slasher film. I want her to do whatever she wants for the end of time forever. But yeah, this movie has completely like flown under the radar for me. And unfortunately, I think probably for a lot of other people as well. Yeah, uh, it did do okay at the box office. It wasn't like a disaster or anything, but it, uh, especially for a movie that looks like it was relatively low budget. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think it is a movie that deserves a wider audience. And uh, I, I don't think the title is very good, I have to say. I, I understand what the title is referencing. Yeah. It's in fact but, terrible. Yeah, But it's not, it's not a very good title given the, the subject matter. So all mm -hmm. that said... I don't uh, know if the other title would have been better. <laughs> right. Like oh, here, here we go again. There's yeah. an amazing ad um, outside of the AMC in Burbank, like the big theater that a lot of things happen at. And it's Channing Tatum's face and it just says blink twice and it covers like three apartment building yeah. fronts. And all I could think about is... Could you imagine walking out of seeing like <laughs> yep. Despicable Me Four and it's just giant Channing Tatum face with Pussy Island? I'm like, oh, come okay, on, that's probably why they had to change that. That would yeah. be the apex of our culture, you know, yeah. if we made that happen. Yeah. So, BJ, what are some of the things that you appreciated about this movie, or why are you genetically engineered to uh, like this movie? So, more of that will come up in spoilers, but yes. on its surface. Um, Any time you're going to give me Alia Shawkat in a best friend role, I'm already in because she is mm -hmm. one of cinema's greatest best friends. She's incredible. Um, but really what got me was I love when symmetry is uh, dangerous. I love dangerous symmetry when you're in a building and everything is a little bit too symmetrical. Like that flags a lot of my warning bells. And Zoe Kravitz really did a good job with this in a way that feels very like Overlook Hotel with this resort, which I really, really appreciated. Um, but it's it's a lot of really cool characters. It's a great story about women. Uh, it's so dark in ways that we will absolutely get into. And that, again, those are all the things that I love. I love women. I love violence. <laughs> uh, you love women who do violence. Yeah. I yeah. love women who do violence. I support women's rights and women's wrongs. <laughs> <laughs> I think what was really impressive to me about Blink Twice is how confident it feels as a dork cholo to be like, a lot of decisions are being made. There's a lot of like literally just there's a lot of shots in the movie, a lot of close-ups, a lot of yeah. overhead shots, symmetrical shots, like you said. Basically, a lot. Like it, it feels like it has emerged to fully formed. It's not somebody 
trying to figure out what their voice is. It feels like, oh, this person knows exactly how to command their craft when it comes to making a film. And uh, I was really impressed uh, overall by the style of it. Devinder Hardwar, what did you think of Blink Twice? Oh, yeah. I had a lot of fun with this movie. Um, I was reminded of many, many things. Like, it's hard not to be because we have definitely been through a few rich people being asshole movies lately, right? We've had Saltburn. We've had, what was it else? Uh, Glass Onion. You know, it feels like this is a very specific genre. And yeah. again, at the so, beginning Saltburn of this movie, is actually the opposite of well, uh, rich people. But shut anyway. up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's in fact, uh, that, that's the entire no, point. But no, this is very still Saltburn. rich people being assholes. But uh, like, yes. shouldn't we feel bad for them? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, like this true. is of the same vein. It's really interesting to see. Um, I guess a movie could like this come from Zoe Kravitz. You know, guys, our our hot Nebo baby summer is almost <laughs> over. <laughs> right? We've had so much Nepo baby content this summer. It's kind of wild. Just from one family, actually. Just from the Shyamalan family alone, there's been a ton. Uh, but yeah, I was astounded by how confident this movie felt, like you said, Dave. like It looks fantastic. Uh, clearly, like I think Zoe Kravitz can get all her friends into this and like loop in a lot of people who may not have joined like a maybe a lower budget thriller like this one. So it was cool like seeing the who's who of characters like she uh, she put together here. I think Naomi Aki is awesome. Channing Tatum is awesome. Uh, listen, I think longtime listeners of this podcast will know we are Channing Tatum supporters over here. Like we did a step up to the streets commentary way back when. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, we were we were old school. So like you put Channing Tatum in a role that's uh, he shows his charm, but also casts him in a different light than we've seen him before. I also think that itself is entertaining. Um I, I think this is a really strong movie. It's clearly like it's very visceral. I feel like it's a movie based on emotions of like anger and how you're responding to it. Um, I think it's like close to being an incredible movie. And I think this movie in the last act, which we'll talk about some stuff, it could have gone so much harder or at least been more specific about the worldview, I guess. Like I think mm. it, it ends in a way that feels very kind of matter of fact, but I would have loved to live in that that reality and let's explore that aspect of the situation um I, I would have loved to be in this movie longer i guess and to have more growth from the characters because um you know it, it, i think what i what is here is strong like i love the core friendship relationship naomi aki and alia shakat like love alia shakat and everything just uh, them together i really bought uh i bought like all the other like them bonding with the other women and everybody just like hanging out like i i kind of got all that I think maybe last act stuff could have been more refined, but I'm not going to complain too much because this is a debut film. And I think this is a pretty strong debut. Jeff Kanata, your thoughts on Blink Twice? Well, Dave, I guess you could say my thoughts on Blink Twice are best summed up in the form of a limerick. I'm really curious about this one. <laughs> not going to lie. <laughs> Kravitz debut earns her clout. Not just a new voice, it's a shout. Everyone in the cast is cool. The tension is masterful. <laughs> a darker glass onion. Get out. Wow. Oh, you saved yourself at the end there, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, like that, was, uh, that was close. To the, the train almost went off the tracks on that one, Jeff. Just like yeah. the movie. But then it's back, baby, and it's awesome. <laughs> it's back I yeah, yeah. love this movie. Holy moly. I loved it from the first frame of this film, I was in it. I was with these ladies. I was like, uh, I loved the movie before it takes a turn. I was, I was just like loving the mm -hmm. vibe of this movie. It's one of the things neither of you have mentioned yet is it's funny. It's really yeah, funny. It's really yeah. funny. And yep. I just, I love the hang. I love the sort of creeping dread that's established. The sort of weird undercurrent of something not right. I loved how all that's established. As you said, Dave, there's, um, this is not just one of the, the, the coolest directed movies, uh, coolest directed debuts. It is a very, uh, I think, uh, neatly edited movie. The, the, the edits are so cool. There's like, we'll have, uh, you know, close up to close up, but they're yeah. disparate scenes and places. And it l l lends to that disorientation, that kind of crazy uh, losing time because, you know, yeah. the, the movie will cut back and forth in time frequently. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. The way you feel sometimes on a vacation where it's like, yeah. it's all going by too fast. You know, 
time flies when you're having fun kind of and add in the mix of you know rampant drug and alcohol use it's like <laughs> it's just this whirlwind of sensation and the movie feels very tactile it feels like you know obvious uh, smells and and texture and and the 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 feel of this place and i like how this doesn't feel like the mansion from glass onion for example mm-hmm, or the sort mm-hmm. of tip prototypical like mm-hmm. billionaire excess it's got this kind of interesting feel to it that it feels more um it feels older right it feels like this is almost like they've discovered this place mm-hmm. on this island rather than built it yeah and that leads to sort of like what is really going on i was just on the edge of my seat throughout it i loved i mean even the earliest parts of this movie where we're sort of in their workplace and their that transition from a workplace to a vacation just felt so disorienting in a, in the best possible way i i just thought it really is masterful how this movie is uh articulated like the 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 way edits connect moments the way uh it's shot the music of this movie like all of it really transported me and i was swept up in it and then when it like kicks into high gear and we're really going i was like oh, i love this so much I am so with you, BJ, like give Zoe Kravitz a huge budget Mm -hmm. and a lot of rope, you know, a lot of uh, leeway, like let her, let her cook as they say. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I cannot wait to see where her uh, directorial career goes next, because this feels to me like Jordan Peele, right? Mm -hmm. When I, you Mm -hmm. see the first Jordan Peele movie, you're like, oh boy, we're, we're in for a career. And I think that's that's the thing that I came out of this thinking most is, oh boy, Zoe Kravitz is going to have a career. And that's really exciting because it, this feels fresh. It feels exciting. It, it, it has a, it, it doesn't feel like she's aping somebody else. It feels like she's really, as you said, Dave, come out of the gate with a bold and unique and individual vision that is all her own. And man, I am there for it. I, I think this is, this is going to make a strong play for my top 10 of the year. I, mm-hmm. I loved Blink Twice. Same. It, yeah. it is kind of funny, like this movie and Saltburn both come from people who probably never live normal lives. You know, the, <laughs> the, the complaint against yeah. Emerald Fennel is the same thing. It's like she comes from an upper class background. Like she, 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 and Zoe Kravitz too, like a, she's making a movie about basically people who work as waiters, people who are really struggling to get by. I don't know if she's ever fully experienced that in her life, um, just being who she is, but she totally gets the empathy there. I just find it funny that people coming from the upper class are coming down to tell us, yeah, these people are all terrible. We've been there. We're just, we're letting you know. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. We're uh, the canary in the coal mine. (laughs) (laughs) We should get to spoilers real soon. I'll just say, I agree with everyone here. I had a great time with this film. Uh, I thought it was uh, really masterfully done. Uh, There are, a bunch of twists in the movie and a bunch of surprises in the movie. And uh, I was just kind of with it the whole way through, you know, one of the things that we talked about a lot on the film cast is uh, many movies that are interesting by definition need to be low budget because most big studios won't take chances on interesting ideas. They, you know, most, most movie studios are making the same type of movie. Um, And so in order to make an interesting movie, it needs to be low budget, which usually means not that many characters, not that many locations, not that many setups. Uh, And there's only so many ways you can kind of remix that, or you would think so. You think like, oh, there's only so many ways you can remix that. Uh, And I have to say, I think she found a really incredible way. uh, I'm not going to say exactly how it all plays out, but like she found a really incredible way to make one group of people largely in one place feel super interesting and like there's layers to uh, um, to reveal and so on uh and i'm just really impressed whenever someone can do that can take like a, a one location film and and spin it in a way that you haven't seen before it's taking yeah. ingredients that you know and kind of spinning in a way that it's like oh wow this is new and feels fresh and exciting and obviously thematically 
uh, pretty interesting as well. So certainly a good use of her cloud, by the way, to just bring get a lot of people in who probably, like I said, would not have joined a project like this. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah. notable faces, Kyle McLaughlin, come in for two days. You know, we got you. Yeah. Yeah. Even that. Yeah. Haley Joel Osmond. Haley Joel Osmond. Right. The Sixth Sense. Dude, Christian Slater. Come Christian on. Christian Slater. Gina yes. Davis. <laughs> yeah, yes. Gina, Gina Davis. Davis. In like yes. my favorite bit of metacasting in this entire movie because of mm. everything she stands for in real life versus what she stands for in this mm. movie. Chef's yeah. kiss. Indeed. Chef's kiss. But also mm. your main character or one of the leads is named Slater. We got to get Christian Slater in there. He's still around. <laughs> yeah. Like, come yeah. on. Indeed. Good stuff. He, Honestly, he looks he, he looks great, by the way. I think he's Slater has King well. might be my 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 biggest gripe of this movie. Just the name. The name. I'm like, <laughs> yes. oh, oh, that's it's yeah. such a good King name Tech. because you hear it and you're like, one, you were not born with that name. That's a name you came up with <laughs> for yourself. And two, I wanna punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Indeed. All yeah. right, folks, let's get to spoilers for Blink Twice starting right now. One thing we didn't really get to in our pre-spoiler section for obvious reasons is this is a movie that has primarily one trick, you know, and I don't want to mm-hmm. like diminish what it accomplishes, but it's like there is one big reveal. There's one thing that the movie is driving towards, which is what exactly is going on in this island? Uh, and the the short version of it is that uh, these men, these tech bros are sexually assaulting these women and then drugging them so that they don't understand what has gone on. Right. That's don't like the remember kind of, it. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't, yeah, they don't re- remember what happened. Yeah. I do want to point out, actually, by the way, that this was the first movie I think I've seen uh, ever in a theater that had a trigger warning at the beginning of it, which mm-hmm. um, I, uh, you know, I, I I thought was considerate. You know, I appreciated um, I, my feelings on trigger warnings are pretty mixed uh, in general, but I thought it was like respectfully deployed in this situation well it's the um, kind of bj like you know the context there it's like a response to the blake lively movie right which yes some people so, were like should have had a trigger warning yeah. i don't know yeah. yeah so it's it's twofold so i'm also a little mixed on trigger warnings in general because i do yeah. think that there is an onus on an individual to do their own homework because Absolutely. literally anything could be a trigger warning and when we decide like oh seems of like th- uh themes of sexual violence that constitutes a trigger warning then we're establishing a hierarchy of triggers and like that Mm. is kind of icky to me but i do think that given how it is deployed in this movie this is a perfect example movie that does need a trigger warning and it does seem to be a response to it ends with us in that uh, two days before blink twice started including their trigger warnings there was an article in i think it was the hollywood reporter where they were saying it ends with us should have been more upfront about that movie being about domestic violence because the marketing buried that element of it ends with us despite the fact that book is extremely popular like official releases inviting people to see this movie say like oh traumatic childhood well that could be anything um so when that movie turns into a dv movie like yes that can be very jarring if you are going in expecting like oh blake lively rom-com how cute like no that's a lot. So I do think that it was a response to seeing how swift that backlash was and wanting to kind of like get ahead of it. But I also do think that they did a kindness to a lot of Mm -hmm. people because it does come very fast, very hard and Mm -hmm. very graphically like, and that is something that I greatly respect about this movie. But yeah, I understand uh, why that trigger warning is there. And I, I think they should be commended for it. Yeah. yeah, Alamo also did like print versions too at the theater door. So mm-hmm. theaters handle it differently. So one of the things I appreciate about this movie is I think it really does mark a specific moment in our society when the bloom on the tech rose has faded away, right? Like I remember coming up in the world like tech founder, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, so on. Uh, like they're all worshipped and and people think like they're the, <laughs> Elon Musk, they're the greatest, they're so, so smart. And we are now at a point in our society where uh, b- between Jeffrey Epstein mm-hmm. and Elon Musk taking over Twitter and showing his ass and all these other things, like people's opinions of tech CEOs has, from my perspective, plummeted right it's it's gone sure. way down and this movie kind of is, is a mark of that is like this is one way of viewing those tech elites uh that is highly negative uh bj i'm curious what you're what you made of that component of the movie 
Oh, I like love that he's, of course, a tech bro. And I love that the whole uh, sort of like ethos of why they're doing this in the first place is to improve capitalistic productivity of mm-hmm. like, if you right. can't remember trauma, you'll be a better worker. And it's like, of course, you weirdos would think of this. And I also think that given, you know, Slater King talking about like, oh, I have a therapist and I'm doing this therapy thing. You're trying to win therapy, my guy. Like, and you can't win therapy. You have to just work on yourself. You can't be like, well, instead of dealing with my problems, what if no one had problems? Like, that's not how that works. <laughs> but that just goes into like the absolute like mindless brain rot that so many of these tech bros have Mm -hmm. i think like that turn really happened when nft started blowing up and then you would see people say things like we're gonna have nfts of people's short stories and you'll have proof of this and we're gonna put them in a big catalog and everyone can come visit and check out different nfts and everyone's like a library You've invented a library. And it's like that sort of thing where people realized these guys don't actually know what the fuck they're talking about. It's a, I mean, I listen, I'm, I'm the tech person here who writes for a technology website. And let me tell you, Dave, you may have a glowing, you know, or fond memory of uh, early tech startups, but the nineties, nobody thought Bill Gates was cool. Every, it was like, who are these nerds? Look at this nerd. You know, that's basically Steve Jobs was the exception. And even then, like the tech, like his people, his own company, like shot him out of there because he did not like, align with the boringness of tech. Also, what he was really a weirdo. S- Everybody thought he was a weirdo. Everybody you know? thought he was like, a weirdo. Barefoot, the, bare, the barefoot guy at work, you know? Mm. Sort of that too, but also like huge raging monster and asshole dad and everything. But it was really the second startup wave. So the end of the nineties was the big dot com bo- big dot com bust. A lot of the early websites died. Everyone's like tech is dead, the internet is dead. What's gonna happen? Flash forward 10 years. This is when I started covering like venture capital and startups and stuff. Money just started flowing in. Like post the 2008, um, you know, after the the whole like a cr- the crisis there, um, startup money started coming very like very quickly. Um, Facebook started growing quickly. Smartphones came about. The whole like physical manifestation of how we lived. Now we live on our phones. Now we live. You know, things are tied to the cloud. That's where the tech bros got their power. What I took away from this movie, because I was thinking really hard to see, like, could I just review this for Engadget or something? He's not, he's just, he's every bro. Every decade has its own version of this bro. You know, like there are, go look up the pussy posse of the 90s. That's Leonardo DiCaprio and his dudes just hanging out in New York and hanging, like just, th- then it was movie stars. Before then it was rock stars. It's always some group of bros together who have too much power who take advantage of women. Like that's what it ultimately is. Um, yeah, I, I wish the movie actually had leaned more into the tech stuff because it could be, he could be a pharma bro. He could be just a general, like it could be anything. It could be any company really, but tech bros are current hated targets. So yes, it makes sense. Yeah. To that. Yeah. That's why I think it, it, it's broader than yes. just the tech bro. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Cause that, it, that it is, is interchange. He, he doesn't, there's nothing really <laughs> about most of the stuff he does in this movie that is, he has King tech is his company. Right, he has name. King that's tech, but could, it could have been a pharma company. Cause it's been toxic anything. masculinity. Yeah. That is right. like crosshairs. Yeah. Right. And even yeah. it being called like King tech doesn't necessarily mean that it is exclusively tech. Chick-fil-A is about to start a streaming platform. So yeah, sure they will encompass yeah. everything. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. The most delicious yeah. streaming platform. Mm, yeah. To my mouth. I don't know. <laughs> it's streaming to my mouth. Yeah. It no, won't work on Sundays and it hates gay people. So. It hates gay people. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, go oh, ahead. Uh, so it's Peacock? Um, the, um, <laughs> I don't know. That, was, that didn't even make any sense. Um, the, uh, the, <laughs> the, the, I, the, 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 as vicious as this movie is, and, and delightfully so, like I love that it is, it, it really comes at, that sense of entitlement and and also the thing we've left out so far is that sort of uh, apology culture that has uh, bloomed in mm-hmm. in the last several years you know post social media where you know the art of the apology the uh the uh, you know and in this movie the the sort of um uh what's the word i'm looking for the uh performative apology is very much uh at the center of of who this guy is and so he it allows him this leeway because now i've apologized and we get that amazing moment at the end where he screams i'm sorry a thousand times uh in her face uh, I, I thought that was a more scathing indictment of mm-hmm. 
the modern age than than even the the tech stuff. It was this this yep. notion of what you know. All we have to do is say I'm sorry, and I'll go away, and you know, Doctor Disrespect will be back online in in 15 minutes. Or I'm or, working or, on myself. You yeah. know, yeah. Look at my beard. This is a this is a beard of you know regret. Yeah, and I'm I love shaving. that we don't know specifically what mm-hmm. he does because all of these yeah. celebrity apologies are just like they're like a mad lib at this point. You just swap yeah. out what you did and what you're apologizing for, but it's the same apology because we've decided there is a way to apologize. There is a, a certain amount of check boxes that you have to click in order for your apology to be deemed good. And that's it. Again, it's, it's winning. He's, he's trying to win therapy. He's trying to win capitalism. He's trying to win apologies. And it's like, ah, why is this the world we're in? <laughs> One of the other things about the movie that I, I, I loved that I, I would love to get your take on BJ is this, there's a moment in the third act or sort of the beginning of the third act when uh, you know, our main character realizes that all the women there didn't know what the hell was going on. Like all mm-hmm. we, 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 the audience join her in this moment of like, I'm the outsider and all of them have been doing this and everything. And there's sort of this like tacit, um, you know, acknowledgement that this is, a, this is a thing we do all the time. We go to the Island and we have fun, but she realizes, Oh no, it's all of their first times, you know? And mm-hmm. everybody was sort of trusting the, the sort of established, um, you know, <laughs> common behavior that they were perceiving, but all of that was a misunderstanding. I, I just thought that was so fascinating of like, Oh, I, I was only here cause you made it seem like it was cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but oh yeah. None of, we were all doing that with each other. I'm obsessed with this entire angle because society pits women against each other. That is something Mm -hmm. this movie also acknowledges. And not only does society pit women against each other, but it makes you feel like you are the only one experiencing something. We do not encourage women to talk about the shared things that we have in common. This is why it's such a big deal when people do things like admit that they've had an abortion or admit that they've been sexually assaulted because we have been conditioned to be seen and not heard and keep our mouths shut. So there's this thing that's not just, oh, I thought you thought it was cool. So I went because you thought it was cool. It's that no one is actually communicating because they're assuming the same thing about the other person. And it's when you sit down and actually talk about it that you're like, wait, wait. And it's because society is terrified of women bonding together because we do outnumber men uh, straight up. So (laughs) I thought that that was such a brilliant touch to it. And I also think that it feeds into you know, a little bit of like this influencer culture thing where when you see people that are being presented in a certain way where it looks like they have everything going for them, you come up with this idea in your head of like who they are as people, what their moral standings are. And we're seeing that like play out in real time where, yeah, if you're like a hot babe hanging out with these like rich bros, you kind of assume well, I'm different because I'm the cocktail waitress. It's, you know, it's different for me. And then you actually communicate and it's like, No, it's not. If I was susceptible to this, other people would be susceptible to this. We have far more in common with each other than we ever will with those assholes. Yeah. And that, that the movie establishes the, uh, Adria Arjona character as like, she's going to be the antagonist. She's Mm going to be the Mm -hmm. the, the bitch who's getting jealous of her man being taken. And then they become the the, the tightest allies. I just thought that was such a great turn of, yeah, unexpected. You know, it's it's establishing that thing we've seen in a million movies of the the yes. catty infighting of the women pitted against each other, and they both realize, oh, we're in this together. I just thought that was such a cool take. That's a, that whole scene is so great. They're like, wait, why did we get on this airplane with these dudes? <laughs> yeah. We barely. It's like realization after realization, and them just bonding. Loved it. Also, yeah, another what a great year for Adria Arjona. Like, just yeah. love her in this. Fantastic. So there are, as you said, Jeff, there are a lot of funny moments. That's that was like a very funny moment in the movie when they kind of make that realization. One of my favorite funny moments in the movie is when uh, Frida has gone into the office and she's kind of trying to get all the Polaroids and all the phones and everything like that. And then she hides her to the desk and Channing Tatum walks up to the desk and he's like, what are we going to do about you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you think like he sees her, but he's talking about his red couch. Goddamn yeah. ugly couch. Uh, this yeah. is like so an good. amazing, like 
it, just because it's playing with the framing, right? And yeah. like as the viewer, you're seeing she's behind the desk, but like theoretically, Channing Tatum cannot see her, and he's so looking good. at something else. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. The the other funny one is fat blondes. Fat, I'm just fat so excited about fat blondes. <laughs> yeah. Very, I was yeah. cackling. Yes, was that was very, very that was very good. Um, and then like. Uh, l- ki- less funny, but also just very remarkable. I thought was uh, at the final dinner scene. You know, I thought the performance of those two lead actors was amazing. Just tr- trying to pretend like everything is okay when they're clearly deeply upset about what's going on, um, and-, and you can see them kind of mentally deteriorating in real time as like the evening goes on. Uh, I just thought that 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 part of the performance, their performances, I thought was pretty remarkable. So that scene anyway. is the is like the tether of like Jordan Peele's Us tether of mm-hmm. the dinner scene in the bird cage, where like in the bird cage it's like, <laughs> haha, it's so funny, but what if they find out? And in this movie it's like, haha, what if they find out? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, really good stuff. Um, I, uh, why don't we just talk about like the ending real quick? You know, I'm curious. First of all, I think this movie had bangers when it came to the music. Like mm-hmm. the needle drops were excellent. A lot of Agreed. James Brown. Mm-hmm. So uh, good. And so it, it has one of my favorite closing shots of the year, which is like this really, I think it's, um, it's not a zoom in. It's it's almost like a like the camera like dollies in over or like crane shot in over this whole gala. As yep. as it as it reveals that actually, uh, Frida has engineered a, a corporate takeover, <laughs> and is now in charge of the of uh, Channing Tatum's company. Uh, she has theoretically drugged him to forget stuff. I guess she's played with the dosage uh, to to get him to forget a significant amount of stuff, and then has taken over the company. And then, like the final moment of the movie is her looking directly into the camera for like a split second. Mm-hmm. I just love that. It reminded me of. You know, there's many movies where like the char- the character looks into the camera for a split second, and it's like I mean, very, very the very end of Knives Out, same deal. Like, Knives I win, Out, Magnolia. I win. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of movies. Avatar. That do that. Avatar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that true? The cla- That's true. Yeah. yeah. Avatar yeah. One. The classics. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, my reaction is super badass moment. I kind of feel like I gotta turn off my brain a little bit as as the movie goes off because like probably questions coming off of that island you know know, (laughs) know, one of the the things i really like about this movie Mm -hmm. is it just doesn't get bogged down in the non-important shit Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. it it has such confidence in what it's doing and it does what it's doing so well that in a lesser movie i'm gonna be like yeah but how's the perfume work and like there's perfume on the girls, and yet they're like really close to them, and they why don't smell did it. Ma- why did a massive pop star agree to engineer a trap in her <laughs> stadium, in, in her arena movie, show? In a lesser movie, I would, uh, I would have all those quibbles. In this movie, it would, I just, it would be it would almost cripple your opinion of the movie. Indeed, yeah, in, it in would uh, ruin. <laughs> yeah, because it, again, a lesser movie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in this one, I just the fact that we, we like don't even yeah that's beneath this. D- don't movie. worry about the snakes that are the antidote to the flower thing, even though they coexist in the same. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It just, Listen, it just they so hired happens. people to kill the snakes. Obviously, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> it just so happens that this one island has a flower that makes you forget he get, and yes. then also snake venom. That makes you remember. Like, it's just yeah. a, that the biggest the beach. circle of life. <laughs> it's the biggest coincidence in the world. Even the beach um, that made you old, you know, did not have the, the direct <laughs> antidote. You have to work for that, okay? Um, yeah, you have to work to get out of there. BJ Colangelo, any thoughts on how this movie wrapped up? I okay. I love this ending so much, and I know that there are going to be some people who are mm-hmm. going to accuse this of being like kind of like a hashtag girl boss ending. But the thing is, I think that Zoe she Kravitz is now is, a tool of the oppressors. You see, yeah, that's the yeah. Ending. See, that's the thing. Is that's no, why I think now the oppressor. I think yeah. people are going to have that take. I think that is like a very tired take. The wired take is that I think <laughs> Zoe Kravitz is way smarter than this, and sh- this is Zoe Kravitz saying, "Listen." When we talk about like revolution, tear it down, that is a fantasy. That is not the world we live in. That is not going to happen. If we want to enact change, we do have to do it from the inside out. Also, killing Slater King is a kindness to him. He gets out the easy way. And she's like, no, no, no. I'm just going to torture you for years. And Mm -hmm. I'm going to steal your money the entire time that I do it. And it also like 
I didn't have to suspend my disbelief at all because it's like, okay, Slater King is this like problematic white guy and he's running this company, but he's gotten some controversy. Um, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to give my company to this black woman now. And everyone's going to go, oh, he's so brave. Look at him. He's mm-hmm. doing the work. He did Ultimate the right wife thing. Guy. Absolutely. Yeah. So she's taking pure advantage of that. She's making the system work for her. And honestly, I love that. I think that it is really crappy how we consistently tell women like, you have to be better than them, be above them. No, drag them to hell, take their money. Like, <laughs> good on you, Frida. Mm-hmm. Indeed. I did think Indeed. it was cool. I thought it was awesome. The She's using her power. She's using mm-hmm. her power in that moment. And it's so much more satisfying an ending to my mind than, than him killing him being killed. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, most definitely. That's the easy way out. <laughs> I would I would have. This is where I'm like, oh, I, w- I would have loved. Sh- OK, how are you? How are you <laughs> using that power? You know, like maybe that's an event to be like, yeah, yeah, we're using all his money to, uh, you know, bring free health care to all children in America or some shit like just something there. I have questions about the island is the thing because the <laughs> island is just like, so it's just they They just get the girls and they rape the girls. <laughs> that, that's all it is. There's nothing, there's nothing more beyond what these guys are doing. Um, this is the one thing where I feel like the movie could have said a little more or done a little more. I understand that's totally doable. You, you Jeff shared a link to something that seems very, I don't know, somewhat reasonable or somewhat related to everything happening here. I would, I would have loved the more of it. But I, I get like uh, what we got. I, it's I, 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 I don't, yeah, I don't even understand what the complaint is exactly, Dwindra. Like it, it, yeah. the the idea is he's he's shuttling his rich friends to this island. He's and, yeah. literally Epsteining. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, tra- he's sex trafficking, which is like very yeah. s- similar to what Epstein actually did. And I Go do ahead, I do have, but a, I have a theory. It? But the most interesting part is a character we haven't really talked about, which is Lucas, played by Levon Hawk or Levon Hawk. I'm not entirely sure the pronunciation, but he is presented as this like tech wonderkind, and he's going to be the future of the industry. And he's young, and he's very interesting, but he's also a man. We also know he's being drugged, and we know that he's being abused, you know, sexually, physically. He's waking up with black eyes he doesn't remember. Part of me thinks that the true test is for him. Can this guy in our industry continue to be as productive as humanly possible by using the serum where he doesn't remember any of the traumas? We can use him as, like, our guinea pig to prove the theory that without trauma, you can be, you know, you you can invent anything. You can create anything. Your productivity goes through the roof. And... Mm-hmm testing it out on the women like they're treating women as the lab rats like he gets to be the guinea pig they are the lab rats and so they are able to like get really push the limits of like how bad because they they make a line at one point where it's like the worse the situation is the less they remember so they're testing how bad they can go with the women but ultimately like this is a drug that is going to be beneficial in their minds for people like lucas and like that like blows mm-hmm. my mind in seven different directions. Um, because the second I realized he was also being drugged, I was like, Oh, Yo. okay. But also well, he sounds is- like in that scene, Slater's like, well, you, it's almost like you chose to do this, right? You did mm-hmm. nothing. It's like you wanted to forget. That's what I was taking from their scene together. Uh, he certainly knows what's happening to yes. the women though. He's not forgetting yes. that because uh, that wonderful scene where, uh, uh, Channing Tatum, lectures him about you did nothing which yep. feels like a direct commentary on uh, a world of people who, who are like well I, hey i support well, what are you doing about what are you actually mm-hmm. doing mm-hmm. uh i thought that was uh, very powerful although it it felt like coming from channing tatum it felt like the movie like wanted to have that speech happen yeah but it sort of couldn't get him in a room with one of the women to have that conversation so it just forced it with channing tatum but it still kind of worked for me. That kind of worked. Did, did they actually talk about productizing the drug? Because that's one thing I may have missed in all this. Are we just assuming that's what's going to happen? Ch- Channing well, Tatum we... during his monologue at the end okay. kind of heavily hints at it. And yeah. you yeah. also see the Polaroids of all the other white dudes who yeah. are like, right. hey, I got mm-hmm. my sample. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That was one of the things I wanted to shout out, by the way. Jeff, you, you, you made a great point about how um, it feels like this is a house that they discovered as opposed to built. Uh, and what I did appreciate is like, there are a handful of touches of uh, like modern technology. So for instance, when she goes into the room, it's like this old kind of beat up looking shack. And then she goes inside and there's this wall of white uh, Mm -hmm. shelving that has all these red bags on it. 
old beat up looking shack. I don't, I don't know about this. This is a, it is a magnificent building, but it's, you're right. You guys are right that it's old and it's well, old in a very specific, like it almost the, looks like old cr- colonial Caribbean architecture or something. The like building that, that yeah. she goes into is kind of like not right, the, part of the main structure. Right, you know, right, right, the main right. structure is glorious. I'm just saying like, she goes into this kind of like nondescript side area mm-hmm. that has these like, you know, and there's like a freaking janitor sink right next, you know, that's where that woman is doing the right, venom right, extraction. Right. So it's like, <laughs> Uh, but I, I just love combining kind of like really old school stuff with like kind of newer looks. I think uh, it's very striking looking. I get that. And yeah, I think it's, this, like, it's like a perfume yeah. boutique or something when you right, step into right. that room. Yeah. yeah it yeah, turns yeah. into like the millennial gray minimalist nightmare room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But right. I mean, th- that's just the sort of thing I'm getting at. It's like, okay, expand on that. Get to get, tell me more about is it is it just the guys being shitty? I suppose that is the story because that happens all the time. I think yes. of like the allegations against uh, somebody like Kerry Fukunaga, right? Who was one of my like favorite directors for a long time. Really shitty stuff was revealed about him a couple of years ago. It's like, why are you doing this, dude? Why you don't need to do this? But why? And maybe well, that's it. That, maybe that's, that's all it is. I think yeah. that's one of the most fascinating parts of how this is set up in this movie is she would willingly have sex with Channing Tatum at any point. Right. She is wondering why he doesn't want to have sex with her. He's literally like, well, good night. And she's like, good, good night. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to go and wait for the drugs to kick in so that I can exert my power Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. over you. I don't want, like, it, it is so, uh, distorted and twisted this, this, this power fantasy that it, you know, having sex in the normal <laughs> exchange right. of consent is no longer interesting to a, mm-hmm. a person mm-hmm. in that position. Yeah, I, I was uh, on uh, the Decoding TV podcast. I had a uh, one of my co-hosts was uh, named Sarah Mars, and we were talking about how we, we were reviewing Fall of the House of Usher, the new one, right? And she was saying how she was familiar with. Uh, billionaires right and and that mm-hmm. like very many rich people um are involved with i don't want to kink shame but they're involved with weird sex stuff and and the, the reason is because that is like the final frontier like what, what if you mm-hmm. can have literally anything you want then the final frontier the only like taboo right is like making Snort someone blow off of an asshole <laughs> right? mm-hmm. it's like it's like <laughs> it, 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 it is controlling people in a way there's yeah. a reason why like um you know, the most dangerous game. And like, there's a reason why like the fantasies of rich people are uh, killing someone or yeah. forcing someone to have sex. Sure. Cause like, sure. it's the, the only final frontier, like every, everything else is boring after, after you have, you, yeah. you can literally have any possession you desire. Right. Um, and th- there's a reason why many billionaires are into that kind of thing. And it's because it's like, this is the final thing you cannot control. That's why people, I right? mm-hmm. haven't decided to become a billionaire. You know, yeah, I just I know. want to keep it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, when, uh, when all of court. your needs are met, <laughs> finding excitement is a lot harder because Absolutely. for some of us, it's like, we will save up all year to go to Disneyland. And like, that's a big <laughs> deal where yeah. they can like go to another country on a weekend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They can so, build Disneyland in their foyer. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, it also reminds me, you know, this is nothing new, right? You say billionaires. That's the right. That's the rich that's thing. That's the modern jour, version of Caligula. This right? is yeah. Bill Cosby, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. You know, this is not this is not new. And and yes, it goes even farther into antiquity. But you know, like I I think uh, this movie is making a broader point than just our current now billionaire tech bro thing. I think it's making a broader point about power, about about you know, gender inequality about, uh, toxic masculinity. I think it's making, I think it works on a level that is beyond the current moment. And I think that's why it's so effective. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, I think we all really enjoyed the movie and you should definitely go out and check it out. Uh, any other thoughts and BJ, I want to give you the last word before I wrap up here today, but any other thoughts on the movie we want to bring up before we, uh, we bring it home. I mean, I um, mentioned it earlier, but I want to shout out to Gina Davis, who is, you know, mm. arguably one of 
the loudest activists that we have for improving the the roles of women behind the camera. And so mm. for her to willingly play a character of somebody who is uh, contributing to the patriarchy and working within it uh, to feel her semblance of power, I thought was brilliant metacasting. Yes. And her delivery of like, I didn't want to remember is one of the most scathing indictments of the mm -hmm. ways that women perpetuate, you know, misogyny and that internalized misogyny. I thought it was just absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, I want to see Zoe Kravitz make a slasher film. Like, so bad. So, so bad. I mean, she almost did. I, mean, I feel <laughs> like this is like, pretty much almost there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is, like, teetering into, you know, this is, you know, it's a rape revenge movie. It's so amazing and uh, I guess my final word is I will I will shout out my dear friend Lee Monson who writes at the AV Club who texted me after this and said I love Get Out and I love Knives Out so of course I loved Get Knives Out um, <laughs> which I yeah, think is just perfect. Chef's kiss perfection. <laughs> perfect. The the uh, along the Gina Davis lines the um the wonderful thing that this movie gets to play with is we watched them uh, multiple people multiple women drink the venom when's it gonna kick in oh, it's, yeah. it's such a good ticking time bomb <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's the best you're just like when's it gonna right. and then when it does it's so good it's so good yeah yeah it's a pretty great great moment um well anyway uh, i want to give a big thank you to bj colangelo for joining us today bj colangelo is the co-host of this ends at prom a podcast series analyzing the staying power of womanhood featured in coming of age and teen girl movies. Check it out wherever you get your podcasts. He's also the lead evening news editor at slashfilm.com. BJ, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. And I want to say to bring us to the end of our episode at the end of the day, it is really impressive that Zoe Kravitz made a movie and hopefully she'll make many more in the days to come. Thank you so much for watching this video of the Filmcast. Check out these other videos that we have available and be sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get other videos from us in the future. You can also go to thefilmcast.com to catch all of our audio podcast versions of all of our episodes. And support this podcast at patreon.com slash film podcast, where you can sign up for ad-free episodes and exclusive after darks. Thanks so much to everyone who makes the Filmcast possible.